Y'all there? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. We stand in this house in respect of reading God's holy word as our example is given in the book of Nehemiah as they read the book of the law. Men and women stood and listened to it. And when they were done, they responded with the words, Amen. We're going to read it from two different translations. We're going to read our amplified classic version and then we're going to read the uh, New American Standard Bible and uh, and uh, if it's up there, y'all read. use our imagination for a moment. Glad to see my brother James in the house. Man, you look good, boy. He's a working family man. Hey, man, I'm proud of you, man. Good job. I want you to use your imagination. And can we do that? Can we imagine a little bit this afternoon? Use your imagination. And I want you to imagine that you are passionate about painting and creativity. But because you're this passionate creative, you're also a perfectionist. It's because of you all I did not sleep much last night. So I need this tension to kind of not overrule this moment. Just take a breath and let God do what he's going to do. Because you are this passionate creative, you're also a perfectionist. And because of that, every time you use your paintbrush and you put a stroke on the canvas, you become very critical of your own work because of the weight of your own expectations. Oh, no. Say that again. We'll talk slow, y'all. I know we, we started late, but y'all stick with me. You're this perfectionist. And so every time you try to paint your creativity and produce an image, Darielle, you're, you, you, you become so critical of your own work because of your own weight of expectations. So much so that your expectations are now forced on other people who had no expectation for you. And with every perceived mistake that you make, you get more and more frustrated. Matter of fact, you start painting over your last creation. 
You start painting over your last idea. You start trying to paint over what seems like mistakes because the full picture has not come together yet, Dontario. And you're doing this in an attempt to erase your errors. But the layers of you trying to cover up your mistakes on the canvas now become heavy and muddied. Now, I want you to imagine that there's this person who cares about you, and he's your mentor, and he now gives you the gift because he sees you struggling to complete your purpose. And so he presents you with a special gift. It's a unique type of canvas, Clay, and, and this particular canvas that he gives you has one remarkable feature, Jasmine. The feature that it has is that every time you make a stroke, if you have made a mistake, this canvas allows you to completely absorb and erase any stroke that you made the moment you choose to remove it. I'm talking about like no trace, no evidence, as if the mistake never happened. Because of this, you become excited about this idea that you have a newfound freedom to make mistakes that never come back to haunt you. You have this newfound freedom to make mistakes that don't stare you in the face years later. You have freedom to make mistakes that doesn't cause you to feel, champ, like you're behind time and you have to hurry up and get to another place. This freedom now allows your purpose and your creativity to flourish, to become more expressive about what rests inside of you that you must transfer out of your head and into this open world for people to appreciate. I'm talking about your life. Now, this canvas is much like forgiveness that God offers. As described in our text today, he doesn't just cover up our mistakes. No, he doesn't just cover up our errors. No, he completely erases them for his own benefit. That's what it means when it says for his own sake. And then this allows us to start new just as this canvas frees us from the fear of making irreversible mistakes. God's forgiveness liberates us. Say that God's forgiveness, God's forgiveness. liberates us from past sin and current guilt. I'll say it again. God's forgiveness liberates us from past sin and current guilt. What would you do if you knew that every mistake you made would go unaccounted for? How would you live if you knew that nobody remembered that one thing you did wrong? How much more freedom would you have if you didn't have to spend so much time explaining yourself so that you could express yourself? Matter of fact, that's a prophetic word right there that you need to spend less time explaining yourself right. so you can spend more time expressing yourself okay. because some people can't express themselves in full reality of life because they spend too much time explaining themselves, explaining that abortion, explaining that divorce, explaining that foreclosure, explaining that, that, that thought, explaining that idea, explaining that decision, explaining that job, uh, that job that you messed over and quit, explaining that you didn't budget correctly. What if we did not have to, explaining what we allowed to come out of our mouth when we allowed it to come out? What would happen? How would you live? If you spent less time trying to explain a thing versus living expressively in your eternal glory. The delete key. Shout that. The delete key. The delete key, the delete key is one of the most powerful functions that can be in operation on the keyboard. 
The delete key is also, Avery, known as the backspace key. Yeah. It used to be the backspace key, and then some keyboards, Tamika, would allow you to have a backspace key right next to a delete key, yeah. depending on what system you were using. But in most times now, most keyboards only possess a delete key, and the delete key's function is to erase, remove, correct, and cancel previously entered commands and images. The delete key's function is to erase, remove, correct, and cancel previously entered commands and images. And images. And images. Kiana, the flexibility of the delete key allows you to either remove your last single input one by one, or you can select an entire section or scope of work and images and press one button and it all disappears. Shout, use your delete key. Use your delete key. It is also known, less known, but, but also known as the forward delete key. Uh -huh. Say that, forward delete. The delete key is less known as, but also known as the forward delete key. And I want you to notice something because there is never a delete key on the left side of the keyboard. A delete key does not rest on the left side of the keyboard. It, it rests on the right side of the keyboard. And in most cases, it is the, it's one of the most forward set of keys. Now, whether this was strategically done or spiritually inspired, we should note that the deleting a thing allows a person and a process to move forward, never backwards. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Deleting a thing allows a person and a process to move forward, never backwards or bound by a recent mistake. Could you imagine what your documents would look like without a delete key? <laughs> You'd be like me in my younger days when my, when my parents still had a typewriter ripping that paper out the typewriter and inserting another one and starting all over again. Because even the backspace, you couldn't, leave, you couldn't release the ink and the imprint. There was still evidence of a mistake. And if you're a perfectionist, you don't want any evidence. You'll throw the whole thing away. Throw the whole thing away and start over and then get mad about how long it's taking. Because as a perfectionist, you cannot stand to see your mistakes. We have just entered the moment mid-conversation where God is wrapping up his closing arguments about his ability to redeem the time for his people by releasing them from their transgressions. Say these words. Forgiveness... Is a, decision, is a decision, not a deed, not a deed or given due, or given due to, being deemed to being deemed deserving. Forgiveness is a decision, not a deed, or given due to being deemed deserving. For my own sake I'm going to blot it out wipe it out for my own sake not that you did anything to deserve forgiveness I'm just going to do it because it helps me redeem your story that's how God treats us not that you worshipped well enough to be forgiven not that you sowed enough to be forgiven not that you prayed enough to be forgiven. Matter of fact, you can do all that stuff wrong. 
But in this text, because he wants to redeem those who he loves, he says, I'm going to forget all your mistakes, all your shortcomings, all your inadequacies for the sake of you having an opportunity to be redeemed. How many of us owe some people forgiveness? Not because they deserved it, but because you just decided to do it. Because God's decision to grant forgiveness is solely based on himself and not on the actions or the attitudes from us that, that, that it did not cancel us. It did not cancel him. His forgiving of us didn't cancel him. His forgiveness of us didn't challenge his holiness. He says, I'm going to do it, Dontario, for my own sake. And it's not going to make my reputation questionable because I decided to forgive you. Let that rest. God says my reputation is not going to be impacted because I decided to forgive you. But here's the truth. Many times we are so concerned about others' lack of ability or action to cause us to decide not to use our delete key because they didn't make things right with us because they didn't come back and apologize because they didn't do what they said they were going to do. We based our usage of a delete key based upon someone else's ability or actions and we rip ourselves out of power. Then there's this other group that many times we're so concerned about our own image and our own strength being in question that we will not decide to use our delete key. We're so concerned about our image and our strength being in question and God's not concerned about his holiness being in question. That he says, I'm not going to remember your sin because I'm more concerned about an inward allegiance more than I am an outward act. <sighs> Lay hands on yourself and say, I have to forgive. I have to forgive. He says, I will not remember. I will not remember. How many of you in this room who won't lie before the Holy Ghost have said these words, I'll forgive, but I won't forget? Mm-hmm. God says, I will not remember. I, I will not remember. God says, I'm not going to hold record of your wrongdoing. I'm just, just not going to do it. I can't do it. it. It makes no sense for me to do that if I want to accomplish this idea of receiving a possible redeeming of your story. Ephesians 4 tells us to be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Mark 11 tells us, and whenever you stand praying, forgive, and if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. 1 John says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Matthew 6 tells us, but if we do not forgive others of their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive your trespasses. Uh, Matthew 18 says, and Peter came up to him and said, Lord, how often should I forgive my brother after he sinned against me? And Jesus said, how many times? Uh, Seventy times Seven. Matthew 6 then also tells us that if we forgive, God will forgive us. But if we don't, he won't. Use your delete key. Judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. When we become absent of forgiveness, we really become absent of full power. Matter of fact, uh, Colossians tells us that we got to bear one another and then if one has a complaint against another we've got to forgive each other because why the Lord has forgiven us so you must also forgive 
Luke 6, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies and then do good to those who hate you. Why? Because God says I'm going to forgive and not remember. It's bigger than just forgive and forget. He says don't remember it. Because remembering it Tina is a mental action. It requires some form of activity that you must do in your own self. Not forgetting a thing because we can forget momentarily, but if I don't remember it at all, I don't care how much you tell me what it is, I'll be like, I don't remember that. There are some things in my life I don't remember. Whether it's mental block, whether it's trauma block or whether it really didn't even happen the way you said it happened but there are some things that I try not to remember I try to forget and when the enemy wants to keep me from going to a new level that thing comes back up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said it comes back up here's the difference Tavante give me my illustration There's this difference of what Jesus is talking, what God is talking about here. This is a picture of a whiteboard. Not sure how well you can see that, but can anybody tell me, is that whiteboard clean? It actually is. We cleaned it. But after so many markings, I don't care what type of substance, we've tried a lot of substances. So much so that Miss Brenda and I have recently been talking about, do we just paint over it? Do we put wallpaper over it? Uh, Can we create a new whiteboard wall? I was going to use my whiteboard, but the children are using it today. So I had to go pick the one that was in the the strategic room. Thank you, Jasmine. But this is evidence of years of mistakes and forgotten about ideas. Because most times when you see it like this, that means something stayed on there too long that once you went back to clear it out, there was a residue there. And this is how our mind is when we try to forget. We try to forget and we want a clean slate, but we can't get a clean slate because we left that memory there so long that now there's a residue of it. So what you're looking at is not a dirty whiteboard. It's a residue impacted whiteboard. You can go in there with bleach. You can go in there with Windex. You can go in there with whatever you think is going to clean that board. And we're going to we're going to wax on and wax off. And you know what's going to still be there? The residue. You're going to come to the altar and you're going to cry. Lord, I forgive him. Help me to forgive him. Help me clean my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're going to go home, wax on, wax off. And guess what's still going to be there? The residue. Because forgetting is not the cheat code. Not remembering is. When you delete something with the delete key, there's no evidence of it ever being there. So by the time anyone else sees it, they don't know you had any mistakes. Let me talk to this room real quick because there are some of you who are living your life under the judgment of your own expectations and you have not forgiven yourself and so you don't even have have received the freedom that comes from God saying, I'll forget that. God forgot it, but you still hold it on to it. I'll cast your sins into the sea. I will throw them as far as the east is from the west. Who drives in here? How many of y'all drive? Can you drive east and ever get west? Can you drive north? Can, can, no, no, it's, it's, it, it's because they never come back around to each other. So when God says, I throw your, you, I, your sins are so far as the east is from the west, that means you'll never come back in contact with what your wrongdoing was when I forget that. Uh, I, religious. Oh, Say it. Blah, Say blah. It. Religiously speaking. Ah, I got that battery taste in my mouth. Deliverance is going to happen in here. Ah, Religiously speaking, champ, we are so fearful of the angels are writing down everything in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
I'm, I'm going home. I'm going home. Religiously, we, we are fearful of a eternal record that God says, I want to redeem your time and through repentance, I'll tear that page out. So here you are in church. I, 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 got, I, I got to get myself together before I come to the Lord. I got to get myself together before I serve. I got to clean this up and I got to do that. And God is saying, I just want you to come to the realization that I'm willing to forget that. You're not about to stand. Mm, I'm here. You ain't about to stand at the pearly gates and listen to the last 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. How long are you allowed to live? Every wrongdoing you did before he says, come on in, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Catholics live like that. Uh-oh. And they do. Because if I do good, Hail Mary. If I do good, uh-oh. Confessionals. If I do good, uh-oh. If I do good, then I can see God. But doing good is not enough. And because God is not looking for those who do good, he's looking for those who have internal relationship with him because my good never gets me to glory. And that is why we act like scared little children before God, afraid to disappoint our parents because we don't want to be shamed and whipped. But God is not looking to shame and whip you. Use your delete key. He already has. Now, before I give somebody freedom to just wow out, because I know who I'm talking to in this room. I understand. We got some people still need some sandpaper around the edges. So before you start wilding out, because you said God will forget and press the delete key, understand this only comes by way of relationship, which is granted access through repentance. And repentance is a change of heart and mind, not a recital. Your means of repentance has become such a recital that God don't hear it no more. Because all you're doing is reciting, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Oh, that's grace, great. I get grace again. No, it's relationship of me changing my heart and my mind. When I say I'm not going to do that no more, I really mean I'm not going to do that. I cannot do, I will not, I shall not. If I do it, I got to die. So what he says is that one translation says figuratively that I'm going to either blot out your sins. Oh, my, 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 my mom used to have this special carpet. We spilled some on it. Ah, you, don't, you don't wipe that up. You got to gotta blot that out. Because if you wipe it, it gets down up into the fibers. You got to Blot that out. Maybe figuratively, God, little by little, is just blotting that thing out of you. But then, but then, but then another, another translation says, no, uh, it's not a blotting because this is like a criminal pardoned, but it's the setting free of a guilty man. So, so, so what he really says, I'm setting free the guilty by a sweeping or a wiping. Uh, anybody ever have an etch a sketch? Shake that thing up and make all of what you put on there disappear. It's a wiping or a sweeping away so much so that what's there no longer is there. Now, now in the strict sense, I will, I will remember, I will not remember or. I will forget this expression is not taken literally in the form of our minds because our finite minds cannot understand how you cannot remember who did what to you. Y'all talk. Don't get quiet. Don't y'all shut up on me. Our finite minds are contemplating, how am I supposed to not remember that? You already started thinking about some stuff like, how am I supposed to not remember that? Because our finite minds cannot conceive that God is able to relieve you and release you and to rip that from you if you really let him. 
when you use your delete key. It's not that we're going to pardon somebody and then still penalize them at the same time. He says, no, I will not remember your sins because I want to have this intimate relationship with you and I cannot have this intimate relationship with you if I keep reflecting on the things that caused us to fall out of intimacy I'm talking to somebody in a relationship right now when your reflections now restrict your relations you got to be careful because when your relational element now affects your, 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 your reflections are, ref, are, 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 are messing with your relational element, now every time it's time for us to get connected, we disconnect based on what I remember last. This is why forgiveness is so hard. Because forgiveness requires some type of intimate connection to not keep remembering so we don't have to keep disconnecting. Now, just because I forgave you don't mean we got to be uh, companions again. Mm. God, God wants to redeem the relationship with his children. But there are some people you need to forgive and let go. Forgive and drop it. Forgive and walk away. Forgive, run away. Forgive don't remember it, and then never go back. Amen. I don't care what they say. I don't care how they say it. Put in your mind, is this real repentance? Is this a recital, or is this a changing of the mind and the heart? If it's a change of the mind and the heart, I ought to see it in your actions and not just hear it in your words. So a person can only say, I'm sorry so much before you, st you start saying, yeah, you sorry, all right. Now apologize. I'm just throwing my darts today. I'm just throwing my darts today. God says, and I think I'll land this plane. Tamika looked like she made some good old fried chicken today. I, I, I. Yeah, we're coming to Tamika. Everybody go to Tamika's house for that chicken. Uh, I got some good amens right there. Amen. Mm -hmm. You still use Crisco? I'm talking about like that large. Just okay, cast iron skillet. God says, I'm doing it for my own sake. The usage of the delete key was not for the benefit of freeing just the people. He freed himself. I'm doing this for my own sake. I'm doing this for my own sake. The nature of his unconditional forgiveness now leads to complete forgiveness because it's for God's own sake. God's forgiveness serves his glory, showcasing his character of love, mercy, and grace. And so here it is. Uh, uh, Isaiah 48 tells us God withholds his wrath and refines us for his own sake, highlighting his glory. For those of you who are going to really go back home and read that, it's Isaiah 48 verses 9 through 11 that teaches us. Isaiah 48 uh, verses 9 through 11 that teaches us that God withholds his wrath and refines us for his own sake in order to highlight his glory. And so the restoration of the relationship is the response to God's forgiveness. And then we are to live in freedom because he let it go. How dare you hold on to what God let go? Look across the room and shout at somebody, let it, let it go. That wasn't loud enough. Say it, what's the matter to? Look at somebody in particular. I mean, somebody specific and tell them, let it go today. Let it die here. Let it die right here and let it go for your own sake.
You mean I got to wipe out my phone records? You mean I got to wipe out the inbox? You mean I got to get rid of the screenshots? You mean I've got to clear out all the recordings? You mean I got to throw out the letters? You mean I got to give myself up for the time when I felt the most hurt? The most betrayed? When you made the biggest fool out of me? For my own sake? Yep. You mean I got to realize that some of my own graded failures weren't really failures at all? I was just growing, not falling. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on. I'm, 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 I'm working in here. I'm working in here. You, 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 you mean my perfectionist is something that God doesn't even get glory out of? God never asked you to be perfect. He asked you to be in purpose. Go on and free yourself today. Lay hands on your heart and say, God didn't ask me to be perfect. He asked me to live in purpose. If any man be in Christ. I said I wasn't going to yell today. He is a new creature. She is a new creation. All things have passed away. I forgot that. Behold. All right, all right, all right we there. All things have become new. Can I close this message today? Y'all ready to get free? I've talked to you about the function keys. I've given you so many of them. I've told you some of them are modifier keys. I've even told you, Roy, that in most cases, some of these keys can be combined with other keys to empower these keys to do super functions. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Shout out. I'm going to use my keys. I remember, I remember years ago when the great, 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 my great, my great father-in-law uh, in love, he, he was preaching about having the keys to the kingdom. He had us take out our keys and shake them. It was all that ringing in the church. And then some people walked back out, the, out there and forgot what kind of keys they had. These are not physical keys. These are spiritual function keys that you have the ability to live in. Son, put the graphic up. Put the graphic up. It says function keys. Living within your abilities. That means you're already able to use these. I don't have to lay hands on you. I don't have to empower you. I don't have to prophesy to you. Your ability to do this is already present. And so since I told you about all these modifying keys and sometimes this super action takes place when these keys are combined, I close today's series with telling you that when you put control with the option or alt button and you partner it with the delete key, control, alt, delete. Remember, control is protecting your peace and having a sound mind. The option alt key was using the name of Jesus. Now I'm telling you to free yourself by deleting images and last keystrokes that you made that broke your your level of perfection. Because when you combine these keys together, a reset happens. When you combine these keys together, a reboot happens. When you combine these keys together, a refresh happens. When you combine these keys together, a redo happens. When you combine those keys together, redemption happens. It doesn't matter how slow, how bogged down, how messed up, how stalled out, how locked up your operating system is. If you would just learn how to use your function keys together, you can get a fresh start. There's somebody here today who needs a system reboot. Control, that's not God's spirit. Out in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. Delete. Forget it. Forget it. Everyone 
stand and let's go home. All of you currently have a working delete key in your system. As I shared with you in the earlier parts of this message, forgiveness is a decision. It's not a deed, and it's not something that you deem necessary based upon somebody's actions. Touch your heart and shout, I have to decide. I have to decide. I have to decide. One second, I have to decide. I don't care if it's a mother, a father, a sibling, an uncle, a cousin, a babysitter, an employer, a leader, a pastor, an apostle, a bishop, a prophet. I don't care who it was. I have to decide. I have to decide. I named all these external people. Maybe it's you. You need to free you of you, you perfectionists. You've set all these high expectations over yourself that nobody else set upon you and then when you fail, you talk yourself into a ditch. You go into hiding, you beat yourself up, and you think everybody else sees your failure. No, we're watching you grow. You cannot grow without grief sometimes. But you've got to decide to forgive you. Forgive yourself for being a fool. Forgive yourself for making the wrong decision. Forgive yourself for that mistake. Forgive yourself for those words that you allowed to come out of your mouth. Forgive yourself for leaving too soon or staying too long. Who is that in here? Forgive. Quit wearing fault where God says, I forgot that. Matter of fact, some of you ought to just use some prophetic body language and start taking some stuff off of you because you're still wearing what God forgot. You know, sometimes you go in your closet and you'd be like, oh, I forgot I had that. Sometimes we show up at the altar and God's like, I forgot you even had that. You come up to the altar wearing clothes and wearing seasons and wearing memories that God has forgotten about. Man, oh, 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 okay, God, I got it, I got it, I got it. God is concerned with your infirmities. Man doesn't care about your infirmities. And so if God is concerned about the intimacy and the infirmities that lie inside of you and man is not, guess what ends up happening? Men like to point the finger and remind you when. God says no I forgot that I want to heal you and the only way I can heal you is for you to get that out of your head and your heart eyes closed hands lifted you are that painter again and now you've heard this lesson free yourself of the missed strokes in your life. Did it hurt? Yes. But it can also be healed. Did it have to happen? I don't know. But God wants to heal that. Was it too late to take it back? It was, but you can forget it. And I'm asking you to think about these things not because I need you to go have closure conversations. These closure conversations are not necessary. The only conversation you need to have is the one with yourself and with God. 
and make sure y'all both are in agreement that this thing no longer exists. Don't allow your soul to be like that whiteboard that never looks clean because of the residue of decisions. Begin to talk to your father. 